So like almost every other Amy Warden Soap Challenge challenge you're going to do or see us do, uh, it becomes long. And so as a result, this is a long video. So I'm going to keep this part very, very short so we can talk about all of the rest of the things in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 297 of 365 days of soap. We're getting so close to 300. It's crazy. And yet, yeah, we are tackling another Amy Warden Soap Challenge challenge today, and we are doing the Dancing Funnel. Now, in addition to doing the Dancing Funnel, we are also testing Nurture Soap's fragrances this month, and today we are working with a pear blend, which is really a very good blend. I am in love with this so very much. And since we're doing a dancing funnel, the color scheme that I selected looks like pears, greens and browns and all the things. Yes. And uh, the thing about dancing funnels is uh, it's taking the things that I don't like, like a lot of the things that I don't like in soaping and putting it into one pour. So the biggest things, squeeze bottles, which I hate, and uh, wasted soap batter, which I also hate. So not a fan of the pour in general. Um, it's a cool pour though, the actual technique and the design when everything is done, it's very beautiful. So for the soap challenge, you know, to challenge yourself, yeah, try the dancing funnel. But first watch this video and uh, look at tips and tricks and all the things that come from my pouring and me and whatever, and then, you know, tackle your own. But first let's go check out mine and see whether or not I made a disaster of it all. So this video might be a little bit weird because this is a long pour and I did some weirdness with like speeding things up in places. And uh, I mean, I haven't actually watched it, so. I don't know. We will see what happens. I mean, let's add this to the list of things you don't care about. What you do care about, we are doing the uh, dancing funnel. And that is a Kaylin Clay dispersed in water for this. And we have a yellowy green and a green green and a browny green. And we are making a dancing funnel using Nurture Soap's Juicy Pear for this. Hence the color selection. And this is actually going to be something that I have literally never shown you ever, I think. I don't think I've ever hand whisked a batch to an emulsion. I don't think I've ever done this on the channel. So this is what you're getting. And uh, it's it takes a long time to get it to an emulsion when you're hand whisking. And it can be confusing based on the color of the oils that you already have. Like this particular batch is my new swirls uh, master batch. And so I actually have some hemp seed as well as some karanja in this one because I love what they do to trace. And also I had some hemp seed and some karanja that I wanted to use. So that's what went into this master batch along with about 45% solid oils. And for my swirls master batch, obviously you want, you want a, for something like this for the dancing funnel, it is actually critically important that you get your soap just to an emulsion, just a, a light, nothing emulsion, and don't go any further. Because we are using squeeze bottles, and squeeze bottles suck. 
And so you really want your soap to be very thin when you are doing a dancing funnel. Uh, technically. Technically. But I think... Yeah, no, I have. I've sh I've shown you a dancing funnel on the on the channel before. So the Norberta bar for the Harry Potter soaps line, that is a dancing funnel, and that is a uh, the oils, the scent blend that goes into that is um, dragon's blood because Norberta, Harry Potter, dragon, dragon egg, all the things. Yes, and dragon's blood actually accelerates trace like a mother for me, like like a mother. And so I actually show I showed you in that video, you know, some tips and tricks and what you can do to continue working with the dancing funnel pour even if your batter gets thick. But as you can see, this batter is super thin. Like very thin. This is delightful. This is look at that. It's it's so, so thin. Now, uh, Georgia May, when she was doing her mirror glazes, this was the thinness that she had. And at the end of that, you saw the, essentially the entire batch was nothing but her, her tops, her mirror glaze was nothing but a bunch of soda ash, essentially. And that was because the soap is, was so thin and it was such a, well, I mean, it was a thin batter that she used. And also it's a thin layer that she poured over the soaps that there really just, there wasn't enough heft to it to not be soda ash through and through. And so, you know, that, that sucks, but this is an entire batch of soap. So, you know, it should be fine. And there's more mixing going on with all of this that will, you know, take it to, you know, a thicker consistency throughout all of this. And yeah, yes. So, but very, very beautiful thin batter for this. And this is like one of the big tricks for a, good dancing funnel. Now, on Amy Warden Soap Challenge, she says something to the effect of, do a small batch. And I would agree with that. I, I don't really think you should do anything more than like a 12 bar batch for a dancing funnel at the same time, unless you have a boatload of um, squeeze bottles and maybe some extra hands. Like, because even with the squeeze bottles, having a whole bunch of squeeze bottles prepped, you're still counting. Well, so the whole idea of the dancing funnel is right. You add, uh, you, you put down one color, and so that'd be the brown in this case, and it would be just a little dot of color. And then you would put four times the amount of the the dot of color that you put down, right in the middle of the dot of color that you just put down. So you know, essentially count to one for your brown, and then move it and do another circle, and then on and on and then you go in with your colored batches with your with your other color and you count to four while putting it right in the middle of the circle and allowing it to spread out beautifully and do all yes so that time cannot actually be sped up right you can't if you're counting to one you know 60 times to get the brown into the mold and then you're counting to four 60 times to get the yellow into the mold. you you can't I mean, I guess you could speed it up. You could squeeze harder, but that makes things weird. So, you know, I mean, don't do that. But yeah, so uh, working with smaller batches, that is a better, that's a good idea. I, I do recommend that. And I do agree with uh, Amy Warden's soap challenge for this tutorial. That's thin batter. Literally soap at an emulsion. Um, but th here's a problem. Do you see the chunkiness in the green? Shit. Like, I don't know if I got too much scent into this particular portion or, because the other two didn't have that issue, right? And so I don't, I don't know, but my green is going chunky. And so this is already shaping up to be a pretty scary pour because that green is going chunky right there. But you know, let's go check out this pour and we'll talk more about the whole process. Okay, and the pour. So as I said, everything is in squeeze bottle form, which I hate. And it's, again, look at that beautiful fluid batter that's coming out of there. That's gorgeous. It's just weeping out of the, the bottle. And just a one count for all of that, just little dots of the color, of the base color. And so far, so good. 
right? One count for all of that. Yes, absolutely. Now about four times more for the next colors. Now I'm using two colors here. You do not have to do that. I just wanted to because I do dancing funnels. I mean, I don't really do them often and I'm sure throughout this video we will talk about why I don't do them often, but I've done them enough in my career that, I don't know, a two color dancing funnel just seemed to be a little bit too easy for this and it's supposed to be a challenge. So I decided to do two colors and you know, see where we, where we go from there. And so I will arbitrarily just be ran, like right now I obviously have a pattern. I'm going green, yellow, green, yellow, right? That ends right now at this exact moment because at this exact moment, the next layer of brown has to go in. And the key for the next layer of the brown going in is you put them between the existing bubbles, right? I can never exactly figure out what between means. And you will see that as I continue on with all of this. It's, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I, when you are in the middle of this pour, and for those of you that have done a dancing funnel, for the soapers that are out there that are watching this and have done a dancing fu funnel, weigh in in the comments. Like, when you've done this pour, tell me that your brain doesn't just go to, oh God, what is happening? I just need to get this into the mold. And you stop super paying attention to what's between circles and what's not. I mean, obviously I'm working to not put anything, I won't put anything like directly in the middle of a, like a circle of color. I won't put any brown in the middle of a circle of color, but where the middle is in between things, where the in between is, changes with every continued, every new pass, which, you know, makes sense. But at this point, I, I'm kind of not really paying attention to, am I doing green? Am I doing yellow? I'm just paying attention to, I have to get this in the mold as quickly as possible because I watched my freaking green batter start ricing as I was pouring it into the freaking squeeze bottle. Like, cool. And so, I really did stop paying attention. There's no rhyme or reason to my pattern at this point. And I wish I could say that there was. I, I wish I could be like, oh yeah, this was all intentional. It was well thought out. It's not. It's, there, there's none thinking out with this. And it's just working against the clock at this point. And you know, we are actually not far into this pour. And you saw how thin my soap batter was. I had already added the kaolin, I had whatever, I had colored it, it was still beautifully thin, and it's starting to get thicker. And um, I mean, obviously that's going to happen regardless, because, you know, I mean, soap batter gets thicker, yeah, after it, you know, after the lye hits the oils, all the things, but I feel like it's getting too thick too fast, something that I would experience or, you know, see with a fragrance that might be accelerating. And so, I, I mean, I'm curious to see what Georgia May's experience is with this tomorrow, because she will be using the exact same soap blend or a fragrance blend from Nurture tomorrow. She'll be using the Juicy Pear to do her dancing funnel. And I will be curious to see what her experience is with it. Because so far, Nurture's soap notes have been dead on for all of the things that we have tested all throughout January. Everything has been spot on what they have said. Their soap, their, their fragrances do they have done. And we have soaped within the appropriate percentages or whatever. Like I soap my, my soaps at, I want to say 5%, like just across the board, literally all of them are 5% of, well, that's not really true. So let's see. Uh, what is it? So I would say 6%. 6% of the total oils in all of my soaps, that's what I soap my, that's what I put my fragrance in at. So 
38 ounces of oil for this. 2.4 ounces of fragrance oil went in. That's 6%, right? It's just over 6%. And I think that thing actually did say up to 6% in soap, so I might be a little bit heavy on it. No, I'm not because this actually has extra oils in it. This is actually 40 ounces with oils. The reason this has 40 ounces of oils is because I am using squeeze bottles. And squeeze bottles mean wasted soap. And I hate wasted soap. I mean, I don't know that there's a single soap maker out there that like likes wasted soap and is just okay with that and doesn't do everything in their power to get the soap batter into the mold because like from a business perspective, if you're selling soap, if your soaps are light, you have to discount them, right? If your soaps are light because you were unable to get all of the soap batter into the mold, you have to discount them at that point. You have to sell them for less because they're lighter than advertised or whatever, but you still use the exact same amount of materials to create it. And that's, that sucks, right? So you are still out the exact same amount of money. And you know, again, wait, no. <laughs> I think I've said this before with the Amy Warden soap challenge stuff so much about these, uh, these poor, about these techniques. So many of these techniques really legitimately are just a, Hey, we are, um, they're, they're tedious and they are long and they are, have the potentiality of wasting product and they're not something that you would ever keep in your line on the regular. Like for this, as a prime example, this is actually a great example of this. I only keep one dancing funnel in my line on the regular. And the reason I keep it in, in the line on the regular is because it's the Norberta. The Harry Potter soaps are very, very popular and the house bars, they say, I mean, I make hundreds of batches of those, hundreds of giant batches of those every year, right? They sell out, they sell four to one in comparison to the other three soaps, the beer, the, the butter beer, the Dobby and the Norberta. And so I know that I'm only going to have to experience this pain, you know, like once a month with the Norberta. And so that is the only reason I have this dance because it looks like a dragon's age and so a dragon's egg, dragon's age. I'm, I'm looking for that new Bioware game, guys. Dragon's Age, yeah. Dragon's Egg. I uh, I know it looks like a dragon egg, and so I made it like that specifically, but I only have to do that one, that one funnel pour, dancing funnel thing once a month, and it's fine. But yeah, you don't keep soaps like this in your line, like on the regular, because it's... Again, tedious, very time consuming. You waste a lot of product, of raw materials to do something like this. And you're kinda, you're kinda stressed throughout the whole process. Like, you see how thick they're getting. Although, that's that's a thing that I did uh, talk about in the Norberta. So, do you see, I don't know if you can actually see what I am doing at this point, but I don't know if the angle is right, but the soap is getting thicker and thicker. And so what I am doing is I'm actually placing the nozzle, the tip of the, of the squeeze bottle into the brown soap and then squeezing. And so that's allowing it to still sort of spread out the brown circle underneath. And so that's the biggest tip. If your soap starts getting thick with the dancing funnel, put your nozzle directly into the brown with your next color so it will still spread it out because this soap at this, at this point, super thick. And I am actually very curious to see what Georgia May's experience is with this. She will still hand mix it and you know not take the stick to it and do all the things. And if she also experiences the soap getting overly thick, we're gonna have to go ahead and say that this is nurture soaps, um, that, that it, the fragrance accelerated. Um, I wouldn't really call it, I don't know. I've been very pleased with Nurture Soap though, right? Like their fragrance oils, they're delightful. They stick through saponification like nobody's business. The scent has been so strong and so beautiful for every soap that we've done. 
after saponification, after CPOP, after all the things. So I wouldn't really call this a fail. Um, it's just the nature of the pour more than anything. But regardless, I am curious to see what Georgia May comes up with for this. Now we're going to do a couple big bang downs with all this and get all the lumps and bumps out of there and uh, make sure everything's sort of even for CPOP. And I am interested to cut these bars and see what they look like tomorrow. So let's go check that out. All right, and on to the cut of this guy. So uh, there's a little bit of seepage going on here. Now that could be from one of, well, my belief is that's from one of two things. Either the fragrance oil is has some seepage problems or we've got a little bit of separation going on. And I am rather inclined to say that it's the latter because again, when you are soaping something at just a really, just barely stable emulsion, this is the risk you take. And that's also the reason why I definitely, definitely see pop anything that I'm soaping at a really thin emulsion. So the bars themselves, they look great. Uh, the scent stuck really nicely. So this, uh, this pair, yeah, I'm, it's a winner. I'm sold. I'm hooked for sure. But the bars, they look really, really beautiful. And as you can see, you know, as they start getting chunked out into their individual soaps here, yeah, they're, they're all, they're all gorgeous for sure. This is a, they're very, very soft at this point though. And so I'm not going to be able to show you the final step with all of this, but really to really make sure the pattern comes out really nicely, you want to trim off all the end ends, like run it through your planer and, uh, consider doing, you know, planing off the top as well. If there's any sort of bumps or whatever, you can go either way with that. I actually prefer to not cause I kind of like the texture. In the little the little bumpies but you know I'm go I'll show you if I can in tomorrow's video for Georgia May because this will have had a chance to set up a little bit longer to allow me to plain you know what they look like plain versus not but you can really see that beautiful pattern that goes through the you know the whole bar there with the the circles and all of the things like that's it's a beautiful bar of soap it really is it's a beautiful pour it's a lovely technique to do you know, once in a very great while. This is not something that I would ever actually put in my line as a main staple that I have to make a whole lot of ever because, well, because it's tedious really. And also just the waste of soap. I mean, all of the extra soap that gets stuck in the containers or that you can't put in because the soap batter got too thick, too fat. No, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. So, but again, it's a, it's a pretty pour. There's definitely some fun stuff that you can do with it. It can be river rocks. It can be dragon's eggs. It can be soap bubbles. It can be all of the cool things with a technique like this, but it's a, uh, it's tedious. It's long and it's, uh, there's a lot of waste that comes from it. So, you know, I mean, take that for what it is. If you're fine with tedious and long and wasting soap materials, then yeah, do your thing. Make, make everything dancing funnel because they're super cute. And they're, you know, that's, those are very cute soaps for sure. And I think the uh, the design here with the uh, the pair really, that it works. It's, you know, it's all a thing for sure. But those are uh, my dancing funnel soaps. That is day 297 and we will check out Georgia Mays tomorrow. I mean, of course I didn't make a disaster of it. I don't do a lot of dancing funnels, but when I do dancing funnels, I've done enough of them every year because I have the Norverta in the Harry Potter line that, yeah, I mean, I have the process down. It's still an annoying process though, because you do waste soap batter, like a lot of it. And for that reason, not a big fan. But again, for the soap challenge, cool, try it, do the things. It's uh, it's tedious, It's, uh, but most of them are really. So yeah, that is my dancing funnel. Now tomorrow will be Georgia May's turn at the dancing funnel. And I don't think she's ever actually done one. She's never poured the Norberta. Maybe she's played around with the dancing funnel just for funsies because she wanted to try it out at some point, but I'm pretty sure she hasn't. So it'll be a brand new experience for her. Same soaping oils, same fragrance oils, but different design color and a different soaper doing the thing. So yes, if you're interested in seeing what she comes up with tomorrow, you should subscribe because then you'll get notified when I drop that video. 
because I don't tend to drop them at like normal times during the day. It's kind of whenever a, oh God, I gotta get the video out type of situation. Yes, so if you subscribe, you'll get notified. That'd be awesome. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, you're awesome. Thank you so much for existing in my soapy world. Thanks for being one of my sudsers. I super appreciate it. I love interacting with you guys each and every day, so it's always a lot of fun for me. I'm out of here for today. I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for Georgia May tackling the dancing funnel in epic Georgia May style. Bye.